it's a good thing you're here because I wanted to make sure that you saw my little wooden pig. Uh, her name is uh, Chrissy P, like as in Chrissy P. Bacon. Anyway, enjoy the video. What's up you guys, the most requested, the most popular video on my channel right now is Amazon's most popular 2020 question. So you guys are probably wondering, well what's Amazon's most popular 2021 question and how can Andrew possibly predict that in the future? Well, there's two ways. One, you can find a ton of the questions that you are gonna be probably asked from LeetCode. Even in the free section of LeetCode, you're gonna find these questions. Number two, I am able to cross reference these questions on LeetCode with a database that I found on GitHub about which companies ask. So this question is frequently asked by Amazon, Adobe, and Google. From my research, I have confidence that we are gonna be answering the most frequently asked question in 2021. Nostradamus style, this is the big kahuna. Let's solve it together, you and me. I'm not only gonna answer questions like how long should you spend on each section of the question, I'm also going to answer questions like what clarifying questions should you ask the interviewer so that you keep a conversation rolling, and especially I'm gonna answer the question of how do you smash the like button so that we defeat that YouTube algorithm together. And without further ado, this is Professor Meatball, my name is Andrew, and we're gonna get started right away. Department top three salaries. So the employee table holds all employees. Every employee has an ID, and there is also a column for the department ID. The department table holds all departments of the company. We have to write a SQL query to find we have to write a SQL query to find employees who earn the top three salaries in each of the departments. For the above tables, your SQL query should return the following rows. Orders of rows does not matter. Okay, so let us try and solve it. There are usually three questions to ask in each of these final round interviews. You see this is a hard question on LeetCode. That's probably the level of difficulty of a final round interview, something of an onsite or a virtual onsite if you're in the pandemic still when you're watching this. The main reason why there are three parts to each question is that humans think in threes. So the interviewer is going to be impressed that you can break down the question into three individual parts. If you really don't think that there's three parts, you can break it down to two, but usually people don't just go and splat their brains all over the page. So to start this question, I would talk to the interviewer, hey, a, I would like to take maybe three or four minutes to break down my thoughts. And then I would start breaking it down into these three sections. First thing I would do is talk about the distinct salaries of the table employee. The reason why is because salaries could be the same, right? Uh, especially in the, this day and age when the market is competitive, you can imagine that there's multiple $80,000 salaries and we want to be able to compare distinctly each individual salary uh, by deduping all the 80,000s into just one $80,000 value. The second part is a subquery. We want to be able to write the subquery as a selection of all salaries uh, that are greater than the outer query. The second step is tied to the first step. We want to be able to count step one for each salary in table employee where we aggregate by salary in employee. So we are going to group by salary as in and by this, I mean the employee ID. And what we're trying to do here intuitively is find out, well, for each person, how many salaries are greater than this person? If there's more than a count of three salaries that is greater than this salary, then it means that it's not the top three. Because if it was a top three, it would only have zero, one, or two salaries that is greater than this salary. Part three is a tricky one because we've already solved it for department agnostic queries, but now we need to partition by department. So that's the tricky part, and it, it might make you want to move into a window function to begin with. Uh, window functions are pretty tricky to play around with. Make sure that you know it in the back of your mind, just in case, but if you can help it, try to avoid a window function because it can mess your flow up. For now, I'm just going to join the department table to get that information. 
Once I have this part of the query finished, I would turn to the interviewer and say, how does this outline look? I would talk through each of the steps and see how the interviewer reacts, favorably or not favorably. If you're wondering how I was able to conceptualize each of these sections, it just takes a lot of practice. So what I recommend is going down to lead code and practicing one free question every single day, or a question in SQL and a question in Python, if you're trying to do the whole shebang of a data science preparation bootcamp. And there's two types of interviewers in this situation. One could try to stonewall you and just try to show no information, even the whites of his eyes are not gonna be shown. He's just going to look down upon you and say, well, what do you think about that? Do you, do you think that's right? Hmm. Okay. And that could be the worst case scenario. No interviewer is gonna be a, a mean person to you. They're just trying to show how you react in a stressful situation where you don't have all of the answers in front of you and there's not a lot of feedback coming your way. The best case scenario is an interviewer that guides you on to the right path if you've strayed off or gives you a definitive, yes, this is the best way. You got it, Slugger. This is a really good job. Thank you for telling me your outline ahead of time. Always outline, though. No matter what type of interviewer you have, they are looking for the fact that you are able to outline. So never go into code directly. But now that we've outlined, let's break it down into code. The first part of every select statement is select. So let's start with that. Select distinct salary from employee. Checking my syntax. That looks good so far. Now, the first part is done. We need to create that subquery for the second part. So count step one for each salary in table employee or aggregate by employee ID in employee. So now we need two employee tables. So we're gonna call this one E1. Um, and now this is a subquery. Okay, we are counting step one. So we need to put this count outside of the distinct salary. Okay. So I'm gonna label this sub for the subquery. And now for the outer query, I'm going to select this query at the end of the day. Okay. So for now, we're gonna, we, were, we are gonna have department, but department currently is uh, off the table. So department, let's X that out for now. Uh, and then we have employee. So it looks like it's employee name. So I'm gonna have uh, E2, so I'm gonna call this table E2, employee, oh, sorry, it's just name. E2 name, and then we want their salary. So E2 dot salary. Okay, so we've selected this. And we need to select this from uh, employee table, and that's E2. Okay, so I mentioned verbally that in this step, we need to check whether or not the number of distinct salaries, the count of distinct salaries, is greater than three. So let's do this here. So where three is greater than this number. And we're not quite done, we need to make this subquery a where e2 dot id is less than e1 dot id. It's because we're trying to find out how many of these e1 salaries is greater than the e2 salary that we're aggregating by. So currently this query should get us these two columns here, employee and salary, uh, but we don't have department yet because we need to join. So remember, the outline is really helpful because I would have forgotten that I needed this step too. So on the third step, we need to join to the department table. So what we're gonna do here is joins come after the from statement. So we're gonna do join. What kind of join is it gonna be? So we know the department table holds all the departments of the company. So this table is a directory. And this table, the employee table, is also a bit of a directory, except that this table is more like a ledger because it goes by employee by employee, whereas the department table is really just holding information. So this table is more restrictive, but we only care about what goes into this table because that's the ultimate outcome. So this is just a normal join or an inner join to be specific. Okay, so an inner join on department table on, and this is the tricky part, well not really. This is the part where we have to join on a specific column. For E2, it is the department, oh, oh, derp, department ID 
And for department, and I'm going to alias that as D. Put those as is in there, as, as, as. E, uh, I'm going to call it D.ID, because it's ID over here. So the second part is tricky. How do we get the department ID information into the inner query? Well, it would be natural to think about a join as a crutch, but it could be even simpler than that. We just need a where filter. So we're going to filter, add one more where statement, which is always and, never two where statements in a row. We are going to add uh, E1 dot department ID must equal E2 department ID. Department ID, there you go. All right, so before we move forward and submit this code, there is always proof checking to be made. So if you can come along with me, there are actually three mistakes in this code. I'll take a second to have you guys think about where we are going wrong. Okay, so hope you had enough time to figure it out. The first thing to notice is that we do not have department as in the department table, it's actually name. So we have to go back and label this. We can label this as department, but it has to be d dot uh, d dot name as department. The second thing is that we are comparing ID instead of salary, which is what I mentioned before. It's easy to get mixed up in the heat of an interview, so that's why you want to be able to go back and make sure that you are actually still following each of the steps that you put up in the outline. So instead of ID, we want to put salary. Third type of mistake is the deadly typo. So look at this depart mend ID down here. Whoopsie daisy. These are three deadly mistakes that can catch your cat. If you wanted me to go over an entire video of mistakes you could possibly make, uh, I'd be happy to do that. Just leave it in the comments down below as well as your like and your subscription down at the door. Now let's run this code. Aha, success. Nobody's perfect, nobody gets it right the very first time unless you do many repetitions and a lot of practice. If you wanted to follow along with me, I'd really appreciate a like for this video. If you laughed or cried or done something productive with your day because of this video, if you want a step-by-step -step full guide on what to do with your first 66 days of data or a 21 day boss mode, head over to Patreon. I'm giving my patrons a Google Doc of every single day what to do to become a six-figure data scientist in six months. Today's trivia question is about SQL. It is, what is the difference between a subquery and a CTE, a common table expression? Would both have worked here? Leave your comments down below of what you think the right answer is, and I will jumble them up and pick an answer to give a free consultation to. Last consultation I gave out was to Enrique Loriano. We talked about data science and his trajectory as an aspiring data scientist. He's a really swell guy, and I appreciate him being an active participant in the live chats and the comment section down below. If you want your brand to be featured in a future video, then go ahead and screenshot this video, tag Andrew Mo Money on your Instagram story, and you can win a chance to be featured in a future video. As always, this was part of a 30 day challenge where I upload a video every day for the month of December. So I'd appreciate it if you help my retention and click through rate by watching a video all the way through to the end and turning on notifications so that you can keep up and stay up with my upload schedule. Check down in the description for four free stocks in the month of December. If you sign up with Weevil and deposit $100 into your investment account, it's still your money. You can always take it out if you don't feel comfortable. And as always, my name is Andrew. You guys are appreciated. For now, but not for forever. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Department top three salaries.